Instead of value engineering, we're engineering value. Bringing you thought leadership on how to find success in U.S. manufacturing, this is Engineering Value, a Draper podcast. Welcome to Engineering Value, a podcast by Draper. I'm your host today, Tyler Kern. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about the importance of knowing your options when it comes to shading systems and understanding the various solutions that are available. And joining me today for this episode is Richard Wilson, architectural consultant for solar control solutions at Draper. Richard, thank you so much for being here. It's a pleasure. I'm pleased that I can do Absolutely. It's, uh, it's great to talk to you today. And we also have Clint Childress. He is the product manager for Solar Control Solutions at Draper as well. Clint, thank you for being here. Thank you, Tyler. Absolutely. So, uh, Richard, let's start off here. Just what are some of the factors that need to be considered when it comes to finding the right shading solutions for a particular space? Uh, it's a good question. And, and I'd say that the starting point is really to get a, a good understanding of the project, what the design team are looking to achieve. Uh, so to that end, getting involved early with the design team, and that may be the architect, it may be a facade consultant, it may be lighting consultants, uh, but really getting to talk with them early to understand what is it they're looking for, what performance are they wanting to achieve, what shading control, uh, aesthetically what do they want, uh, and once we can build up a picture of, of those items, we then can start looking at what are the options uh, and talk through different different alternatives. And the, the intention always is to is to find something that can meet those specific needs. So it, it, there's no there's no definite answer ever with these types of, of projects. It, it's really understanding uh, and then developing ideas and and looking at how they would integrate. Would they work? And add to that, I would like to say that it, that's where we have more of a solutions based approach here in our group. Uh, the we're not selling a product that we're trying to fit into every situation. As Richard mentioned, we listen, we try to understand what are you going for? What is what are the issues? What are the achievables? Aesthetically, performance, and then provide a solution that is customized and fits the project and the needs. We're not trying to take a product that we have and sell it to every single situation. We're trying to listen and provide a solution to fit the situation. Right, and and, and I gather from your answers just that um, that there isn't a one size fits all solution, but that's kind of the beauty of it. It's walking through and understanding. Okay, what are your needs? How can we meet them? Uh, not necessarily with with something that um, is a, is a product right off the shelf, but but in in crafting a solution that really works for each particular customer, right, Clint? So it's it's kind of about that journey of finding what works best for them. Correct. Draper has a full line of shading solutions that we supply day in, day out for bid work that's in the price list. It's on our website. There they are. They have specs. They have details. And when somebody comes to us, we first try to see what standard products fit. And then we build from there. If there's not a standard product that fits, it's trying to create a solution, whether it be modifying a product, bringing in a partner product, or doing a custom design build. So, Clint, I was wondering if you could just walk me through that process uh, that you go through with clients. What do those conversations look like as you determine their needs and what they're looking for specifically? A lot of it is, as Richard mentioned, simply listening. What are you trying to achieve here? Are you trying to achieve glare control, heat control, an aesthetic that fits the design, um, a combination of different things? And then it's building from there, what are products that we know of that can reliably work in this situation? And then we build up the solution from there. We generally try to propose several solutions, if we can, to, if there are several solutions to a situation, to give everybody an opportunity to decide what they like, what they don't like. These projects that we, when we work with the design team, can take place over a period of months. It's generally not one conversation, then we have a solution. Mm -hmm. This might be a months-long approach and why we want to be involved early on, because as the design changes, the solution may change. Richard, is there anything you'd like to add to, the, to uh, Clint's answer there just about that process you walk through with clients? 
Uh, I think he's picked it up pretty well. I, I was going to move on to just to give you a flavor of that mm-hmm. with a, a specific project, what one that we, we completed last year, not a huge project, but I, I think it sort of shows the, 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 sort of the way the processes work. Um, uh, and this was a project just outside Denver. It was a tower, um, and it had it on two sides, on the east and west, it had very large semicircular arch windows. Uh, very big, they had a diameter of perhaps 25, uh, sorry, a, a radius of about 25 feet. Uh, great views, particularly on one side to the Rockies, uh, and the client, the, the people who were on that floor of the building, wanted shading because there was a huge amount of light coming through. The system they had previously had been installed a long time ago was no longer working. So they were looking for a solution. Uh, and they had some fairly clear ideas of what they wanted, the most important being that they they wanted to have an unrestricted view when they didn't need the shades in place. They'd approached a, a company, they had put in some systems which were, were broadly speaking, a, a regular series of, of roller shades pulling up, didn't fully shade the window, lots of cables and so on. Uh, they weren't happy with it, and so we then looked at it and said, well, what can we do? Um, what is the best approach? Draper didn't have a solution. Uh, so at that point, I, I turned to one of the partner companies that I worked with, who I knew had done something on a far smaller scale. Uh, I went to them, said, look, this is what we're looking for. This is what I'd like to achieve. This is what would meet the client's requirements. Can you provide some assistance? Can we work together on it? To cut a long story short, we ended up with systems that are almost like giant fans. Um, that, that sat down at the bottom in a, in a recess and then could move up and track around the window, creating each one covering half of the, the circle or the, the half circle, so a quarter circle with each system. So ultimately what they ended up with was a, a unique shading system, one that, that gave very good light control when the system was deployed, but when it was retracted, there was nothing there and they had their views to the Rockies. Hmm. Uh, and so that's really the process that we like to go through. It's, it's very much what we said from the outset, uh, understanding the needs and then looking for the appropriate solution to get it to work. Yeah, that's a, that's a great example and really just drives uh, drives that home um, that that desire to to find the solution that works best for for each client. And, and Clint, I'm wondering, uh, you know, Richard was just mentioning, uh, you know, some some interesting maybe architectural features uh, of certain buildings. Are there any architectural trends that are really driving the need for customer solutions right now? Just whether it's unique shapes, unique builds, different things that people are prioritizing. Uh, just kind of give me an idea of some of the trends right now and how that's really driving the need for these solutions. Yes, there are some specific trends that have been occurring in the last 15, 16 years, there's been a move to provide more glazing on buildings, more glass, more windows. So as the increased amount of facade becomes glazing versus a hard structure such as concrete or brick, but we have greater uh, amounts of glazing on buildings, that creates uh, more issues with glare, solar heat gain, and a shading strategy has to be implemented on these projects. So that really opens the doors to provide solutions because as we see the amount of glazing increasing, that means that the amount of shading has to increase as well. And then as time has gone on, architects and and owners want more unique shapes. So we have more unique shaped glazing structures, uh, half circles as Richard mentioned, uh, but then there's elliptical shapes, trapezoidal shapes, slopes and angles and windows that are canted in, canted out. And that means that we have to look at a full range of solutions and really dive in with the design team. What do you want to achieve here? Is it What's the shading strategy? Because you have some very unique glazing structures here. What are you trying to achieve when it comes to glare control, solar heat gain control in the space to make it an occupant um, make the occupants feel comfortable and also improve the productivity of the occupants. Because if you don't control glare, if you don't control heat, you can have a beautiful building, you can have this beautiful glazing, but then you have reduced productivity within that space, which isn't what an owner wants to hear when they have a space that can look beautiful. 
Yeah, that's a, that's a great point is that there is that productivity aspect where if the sun is shining straight into your face or, you know, it's really, really hot in a certain section of the office, uh, people are going to be uncomfortable. People are going to be less productive. That absolutely makes sense. Um, Richard, that was a great example that you shared with us earlier. And I wonder if mm. you have any other examples of, of these architectural trends, like what Clint is mentioning, that uh, really kind of drive home this point um, uh, of different trends that are kind of pushing the need for, for more solar solutions. Sure. Uh, let me pick up just very briefly on a couple of them. Mm -hmm. uh, one that we're working on at the moment, um, large structure, new build, uh, as Clint said, lots and lots of glazing. Uh, they have some spaces where between the columns it's 50 feet uh, and the glazing goes 20 feet high on one floor, 30 feet high on a, another floor. Uh, and there they're wanting to, to both have uh, high levels of light exclusion, but also general solar control. And because of the structure of the glazing, uh, they want a single system uh, to shade each of those areas. So we're looking at a system that's 50 feet wide, 30 feet tall, uh, with, again, as the, the previous project that I spoke of, when the system is retracted, there is nothing there. No intermediate side guides, no cables, nothing at all. So that's an example of big, big areas. Uh, second example, um, a building uh, or a structure called The Shed in New York in Hudson Yards. Uh, I'm not certain whether people will know of it, but it's uh, a building on wheels. It sits above the podium of a tower uh, and it can pull out to create a, a performing arts space. Uh, one of the key requirements on this project was that they needed to, to black it out uh, they need to, to effectively eliminate all light. Uh, structure was difficult because it moved backwards and forwards, but also the shape of the glazing was difficult. And we had sections of glazing that were five feet wide, more than 30 feet tall, and the top edge of the glazing was sloping. Uh, and they wanted it blacked out. So what we had to do was to develop a system uh, that could pull up from the bottom uh, and go up that 30 feet or so, uh, and close off the trapezoidal section at the top. Uh, so I, I think those are the trends that we're seeing. Large areas of glazing, often very clear glass, often big expanses of it, and shading systems that are as unobtrusive as possible. Right, and, and having those those solutions that can meet those needs, I think, is um, it, it speaks to what Draper is able to create. It, it speaks to uh, your manufacturing capabilities. So, uh, Richard, can you give me an idea just of uh, some of the range of products that, that Draper provides that, that you have available to customers and clients? Obviously, building custom solutions is part of that, but, but just give us a sense sure. of, of the wider range of product offerings. Okay, so if we take sort of in-house Draper products, uh, then we're really talking primarily fabric systems. So that could be a, a regular roller shade. It, it, may be, uh, it may be a manually operated one. It, it may be a, a motorized system. Uh, we then go into what we would call tension shades, uh, which means that, that we can use them to, to shade skylights. Uh, we can alternatively have them, as, as I described on, on the project of the shed, uh, pulling upwards, so what we would call a bottom-up system. Uh, within Draper, we also have a lot of capabilities to, to do metal work and so on. We Other parts of the business that, that are not shading means that we've got the equipment and the capabilities to do a lot of other things. Uh, so we also, you know, at the Draper facility, have produced uh, very custom systems to meet a, a specific project requirement. Louvers, uh, giant scale Venetian blinds, and so on and so forth. So... Fabric, the core part of the business, a capability to, to produce customized systems. And then, as Clint has mentioned, we have a range of, of partners, mostly European companies, who have products that generally are not available in North America and that Drake was not set up to be able to, uh, to manufacture. So there we can add in systems such as Venetian blind systems. Um, a very specific operable louver system that is used a lot in museums and galleries where very fine levels of light control are required. Uh, 
And then one-off systems. Uh, I've been in the industry for nearly 30 years now and, and over that time have got to know a lot of people within the industry and, uh, and fortunately people that I still talk to and they still talk with me. Um, and so what it does mean that is that, that I have quite a large address book of, of people that I can contact when these unusual situations arise. So it's not a, an unlimited range of products, but it's a pretty broad one. And, and I think there are a few companies, if any, in North America who have that ability to, to really address whatever the, the, the shading requirement might be. Clint, is there anything you want to add just on the, uh, on the product offerings that, that Draper provides? Yeah, I think uh, that, as Richard mentioned, there's both fabric systems that within our group that we're able to provide that come from a lot of production here at our facility in Spiceland, Indiana, but then also fabric systems from European partners as well as metal systems, metal systems that can be produced here, metal systems that are produced with our partners. And these systems can be exterior as well as interior. We're not just limiting our shading solutions to the interior of a building. We can, we many projects we do, we put them on the outside of the building because that makes the most sense for the strategy that they want to have and for the performance that they want to have in shading for that facility. But what we really want to do in our group is listen, design, and provide the right solution for the project. So, Clint, one of the things that that I wonder is if people are fully aware of all of these, uh, all of the various solutions that you can create, custom solutions that you can work with customers. Uh, is that something that typically surprises people when they find out, or do they typically have in their minds just there are you know a, a set amount of of products and we have to somehow try to choose from these products? Um, and is there an education process that goes into it to uh, inform the clients and, and inform your customers on what exactly? Is possible in this area yeah there's a huge amount of education because it comes down to people don't know what they don't know a right, lot of times right. so people haven't even thought of shading in a particular fashion because they've never seen it they've never been exposed to it exterior shading is, is one of those things that i mentioned before you don't see a lot in north america so a lot of architects designers are not thinking in that way when it comes to shading solutions so when we can get in front of them and talk to them and propose solutions that they may not even thought of before, such as some exterior shading solutions. It really opens them up to all the different shading systems that are out there. Fabric, metal, interior, exterior. People, they only really know what they know. And so what we try to do is expand upon that, show them this broad catalog, this these pictures of projects, these solutions that we have brought to the table, and let them let their imagination run and let them think of all the different things that could possibly work on their project. I think the first thing, just, just to pick up, is it, it's actually very rarely that we're in the room with our customer. Mm -hmm. um, we, <laughs> we have this slightly odd situation that, that really what, our, what we're doing is working almost exclusively with, with architects and design professionals. Uh, so we like to have an involvement with the, 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 the end user, the owner of the building, but, but often we don't. So, so we're, we're talking with the design team. Um, and there are sort of two main, I, I guess, two main areas. I mean, sometimes we'll go into a design firm, a firm of architects, and, and we'll present to them. Uh, they, they have a requirement to get credits for their continuing professional education. Uh, and so they would like, you know, they like to have people who can come in, can talk about, to, to talk about different parts of, uh, of the construction process. Uh, so, so one element of what we do is, is to, to do those sort of more formal presentations and, uh, and there talk about, uh, often it is about this whole area that Clint mentioned of exterior shading and, and sort of talking about why that's worth considering uh, and, you know, put the, the shading system on the exterior, we cut out heat gain become, before it comes through the glass, which means that we can reduce air conditioning requirements, we can improve thermal comfort in the space and so on. So one, one element is talking sort of general strategy uh, and then normally developing into, into the, the, the sort of products that, that are available in the marketplace, how they work, what their benefits are, what the, when they should be used or considered. Uh, so one side is that more formal side. The other side is, 
Uh, and the one that I prefer is 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 project based, where you come in to see a, an architect or a facade consultant to talk about a specific project, and then it's a it's a far more focused conversation. It, it becomes one of of really working together. We I often regard ourselves as being sort of the unpaid consultants on a project. Um, our gain is that if we can ultimately win the project, but but I like to be involved in that 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 conversation because I think that we've got a lot to contribute. We can give advice, we can we can assist the design team in really understanding what can be done, what can't be done, and then how they can integrate that into their building, get it to work, get it to be to be seamless. Mm-hmm. Uh, in addition to the shading systems, and we haven't mentioned this, I, I will flag up that the other side is 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 how these systems operate and how they're controlled. So control systems are also incredibly important to make certain that a shading system works effectively. So if we're talking about, let's say, an operable Venetian blind that's installed on the exterior of the building, it can go up, it can go down, the slats can tilt. To get that to perform optimally, we therefore need to have a control system that can monitor where is the sun, or is there sun, knows where the sun is in the sky, can determine whether the sun on the glazing and therefore whether it needs to be shaded or not. And with a Venetian blind can then determine what sun angle the sun angle is and therefore what angle the slats need to be set to. So in addition to, to talking about the, uh, the shading system itself, it's, it's how does it work? How do we optimize it? And then we may need to start talking with the electrical consultants on the project because we now have to integrate all those control systems and all the wiring requirements into the other elements of the building as well. Often that might involve uh, integration with a building management system or building automation system so that, that the, the system, the building the building brain can, can get information from our systems about what they're doing, where they're at, if needs be, can send instructions across. If there's a fire, for example, they may want the shading systems to retract. So it's it's a pretty broad area. And and I think the project side is, is the fascinating one because it's really getting into what you need, how can we get this to work? And at the end of the day, how we, we can make this a, a cost-effective solution that's going to meet your needs. Right, right. Well, I think from this conversation, it's clear that that you have so much expertise in this area and a lot of knowledge and a lot of ability to help clients uh, with their shading needs and and help them find the right solution that that works for them. So uh, Richard Wilson and Clint Childress from uh, Draper, thank you guys so much for joining me today on this episode of Engineering Value and, uh, and discussing this. Tyler, thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. And everybody, thank you for tuning into this episode of Engineering Value, a podcast by Draper. Of course, we'll be back soon with more episodes of the podcast. But until then, I've been your host today, Tyler Kern. Thanks for listening.